babies with flu. And clinical trials on volunteers began on Wednesday in Australia of a vaccine against swine flu. But a leading researcher is now raising serious questions about the way the world is responding to this pandemic. Dr Tom Jefferson says the response to the virus is driven by vested interests. Academics, governments, the World Health Organization and drug companies who all stand to gain. By declaring pandemic, they push the button on this juggernaut that they've created. And of course, antivirals are part of that and vaccines are part of that and the whole panoply is part of that. All I'm saying is let's act with a little bit of caution, common sense, and let's look at the evidence, the hard evidence. Until they actually get used, we, we do not know whether they work. Their seasonal counterparts don't have a very good track record. The evidence from uh, the hundreds of studies that we synthesized is that sometimes they, they work a little uh, and sometimes they don't. In general, the quality of the literature is such that it's very difficult to understand whether they actually work, but they are pumped up. The thing that really scared me was SARS. That was a demonstration of how unpredictable these uh, viral agents can be. There's this one-way obsession with influenza, and the rest we know very little. In front of a poor de poorly defined and changeable threat, what you have to adopt is a strategy of broad response, not putting all your money on one horse. We've been brought up, people of my generation, to understand that a pandemic means deaths and a lot of serious cases. And that, that seems to have dropped out of sight. Uh, and they're lowering the threshold of a definition of a pandemic. Uh, and that is not a good thing in many ways. They've just been injected into the very first people now. That means we'll have no idea um, whether it actually works. Um, because to see whether a vaccine works, you have to see whether it prevents an illness, and, and there's clearly not time for that. Uh, they, will, they will be doing some, some, some blood tests to see whether it produces antibodies, which will give us an idea, but we'll have no idea of whether it works. But the reason it's not being given to the, to the population, I mean, the last statement was that 30 million people might be able to be given it by the end of the year, and the, the reason for that delay is that it's being tested. Well, it cannot be tested enough so that we know whether it works. As I said that is impossible because you have to you have to have enough time in order for the, the, the people to be given the vaccine and then to see whether or not they get an illness. And clearly that can't happen. Also, it will be fast tracked and therefore it there'll be insufficient uh, insufficient time to test it um, for for safety. It will how, sorry to interrupt you, mm. but how is it that you are um Highlight your, you obviously have concerns about this vaccine. When on your Baby Jam website mm. you sell, among other vaccines, unlicensed vaccines in this country, yeah. so surely there must be question marks. If vaccines aren't even licensed, then how is it that you're raising these doubts whilst you're well, also we're getting back to a completely different issue about whether vaccines are licensed or not. That I'm, I'm happy to talk about. Um, they're not licensed in this country because the government doesn't want particularly want to offer them in this country, and therefore, therefore, it, it doesn't. I it just doesn't find it a bit them. odd that on the one hand you're mm. raising concerns about a vaccine that the government has approved, but yet on the other hand you're selling unlicensed vaccines to. The patients. very reason that I offer these other vaccines is because I have concerns uh, about the vaccines offered by the government in this country, and I'm offering choice of uh, smaller vaccines, of vaccines with less aluminium, um, and some of those, most or a lot of those vaccines are not licensed for use in this country because the government doesn't want them here, but they're licensed for use in North America, in, in, in France, in Germany, in lots of other countries. Because you raised some concerns about the MMR jab on that website as well, concerns which have already been disproved to do with connections to autism. Well, we can talk about the MMR if you like, um, uh, certainly. Um, the the Concerns about the MMR and autism have not been uh, disproved. Um, a lot of people are saying that they're being disproved, and certainly Andrew Wakefield has, has effectively been discredited because of an avalanche of propaganda against him. But the research um, that was done um, with linking the po possible link in a small number of children between MMR and autism is still very much there um, and alive and uh, won't go away. But in terms uh, of the swine flu, I mean, yeah. well, we've had 30 deaths. Mm. related uh, to swine flu, not all of them with swine flu as the principal cause, the government surely is duty bound to, to do something about that because it's exactly. talking about, you know, later on in the year, uh, in the autumn, possibly this being much more virulent than it has been so far. Well, I think 
Initially, three months ago, we had Mexicans dropping like nine pins, and uh, we, there was a concern that there'd be a really nasty pandemic of a virulent uh, virus that maybe would be killing millions in this country. And I think at that time, I can quite understand why the government committed itself to buying over 100 million vaccines, which it has in, in effect. Now, three months later, um, and as a GP, I've seen dozens of cases of swine flu, we can see that overwhelmingly, um, in healthy adults, it's a very mild illness, really not much worse than a bad cold. And you would have to question whether or not one should vaccinate a population against an illness that is no worse than a bad cold. There is a case, I would agree with you, for vaccinating uh, those who have a serious underlying medical problem, who are virtually all the people who have died. There's virtually no people who have died who are otherwise healthy. And I think there is a case uh, for vaccinating them. But remember as well that by the time we get this vaccine here um, uh, in the country, uh, the, a lot of us will have come across the virus anyway, and we'll have developed natural immunity, so we'll have better and longer lasting immunity than the vaccine would provide already, which would make a vaccine completely um, unnecessary. Um, and uh, um, as I said, the, the vaccine is being fast tracked, it's been rushed onto the scene, and the normal safety tests that are done before a vaccine is introduced uh, will, be, will be very, very limited. And the last time that uh, a, a, a vaccine was given nationally against a swine flu pandemic was in the USA in 1976. And then after vaccinating millions of people, they stopped that vaccination trial because of an increased rate of uh, side effects. There was something called Guillain-Barre syndrome, a paralyzing disorder, that meant that they had to stop the trial. And we don't know that that's not going to happen again, for example. All right. Okay, Dr. Richard Halverson, thank you very much. Indeed. Now